your penis is now active. Things are buzzing down there, if that makes sense. I'm not saying you feel a gush of fluid going through your penis, but you're going to start getting spontaneous erections again. You're going to start having that morning wood that men talk about. <laughs> and then, you know, you're like, well, hell, I'm hard. Let's do something with this. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy, the number one sugar dating podcast in the world where we pull back the curtains and expose the good, the bad, and the shocking stories. But you know what? I have a really special guest today that uh, Lily and I were talking about at lunch. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Because we were looking at some of her podcast episodes. This is a lady who touches on some subjects that we that most of us, 99% of us, would be interested in. And so her podcast has rocketed up the charts. She's in the top 24, I believe, now in the U.S. And Ireland, number four. And a whole bunch of other countries she's... Even, hasn't even been doing it for a year. So we want to welcome Dr. Bava, the Dr. Sex Fairy. How are you today? Hi, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Such an honor. Well, congratulations on your, it's not instant success, but for most people, that's much quicker than anybody expected, I think, right? Well, I've worked very, very hard for many, many years to be an overnight success to others. <laughs> Perfect. You know, a lot of people don't see the hard work that goes behind the overnight successes, right? Yes. I mean, I started my podcast, I believe, in November or December of last year. Mm -hmm. I'm now 36 episodes in and number 23 on the U.S. charts and, you know, top five many other places. It's great. I mean, my message is clearly resonating with people all over the world. And I understand your TikTok and Instagram views are off the hook. My TikTok started about four months ago. My son said to me, you really need to be on TikTok. And I said, those aren't my people. He said, well, then you don't know your people. <laughs> and I was, right, I was wrong. 36, 37 million views later, I have started quite the revolution on TikTok. I know you, you said you, we had talked earlier and I've actually been on your show and you were actually an ER doctor. Yes, I am both certified in emergency medicine, and that's, I believe, what makes me great as a sexual medicine doctor, because I saw Viagra, Cialis, Trimix gone horribly wrong, and I saw how much people were suffering from sexual dysfunction of various types, men and women, and I felt that there was a need for help. These people simply had nowhere to go, and modern medicine as it exists in the U.S. was failing them. And that's where I came in. So you jumped from ER to what, your own private practice? Yes, yeah. I have a practice called Bava Medical in Boca Raton, Florida. Very good. And people come from what, all over the world to see you? All over the world at this point. In yeah. fact, one of my questions is, where are you from? Because to me, it's not, I can't assume that they're from Boca Raton or from South Florida. Most of them come from somewhere. It's very hard for me to take a day off work or to just cancel or move my appointments because they, we usually are involved with flight arrangements and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very nice to see what's happening. I've listened to a lot of your episodes and I, I've heard your interviews with other people on their podcasts and I, I was hooked from the, the very beginning. We're, we're going to have to do multiple interviews with you because you touch on a lot of things and you help men and women with a lot of things that the older generation deals with because in the sugar daddy sugar baby world most of the gentlemen are 40 to 75 wouldn't you say lily i would say so yeah yeah that that, that reach out to you well of course the ones that reach out to me most of them are, are, <laughs> are older because i am older i get my share of the the young boys mm -hmm. but you know the 20 year olds the 30 year olds that they are dating many men that are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, even 70s. Our co-host, Amy, she has seen some sexual dysfunctions with some of her men and men that have had prostate cancer, different surgeries, and they need help with the sexual end of it. So 
what what kind of services do you offer to those kind of those people? I mean, you address everything, but what would you say you're, you're seeing the most of? I see erectile dysfunction. I believe more than anything else, but I help men with ED and penis enlargement, probably 50, 50. Really? But, yes. Because if you think about it, now you said sugar daddies are usually 40 to 70 ish. Mm -hmm. The range now ED starts very early. Most people don't realize that erectile dysfunction begins earlier than they might think. Everybody thinks that it starts probably about 40, but the truth of the matter is that 20% of men, even in their twenties suffer from erectile dysfunction. And that's very traumatic to them because that's not supposed to happen. Society tells them that they're supposed to be having raging hormones and these, you know, iron erections, but that's not always the case. And as men get older, the chances of erectile dysfunction increase about 10% for every decade of life. So 40% of men in their forties up to 70% of men in their seventies. Mm. So this is clearly a big issue that especially the sugar daddy population deals with. So I help people have not only good function, I also help them have great size. Now, I don't care what anybody says about size doesn't matter. I think that's more a case of what we tell ourselves because <laughs> that's what we believe. But if you ask the average woman, I don't think length matters that much comparatively, but thickness does, girth does matter. And vaginal receptors, when they stretch, especially young vaginal receptors as they stretch, considering the age of your sugar babies, the vagina senses that and it finds it pleasurable. So a thicker penis is more pleasurable to a woman. And I don't care what anybody says. The truth is what it is. It's just in today's politically correct world, we like to think that it doesn't matter, but it does. So I help with that. And I also help them have great function. I don't actually prescribe Viagra, Cialis, or even Trimix, the injectable medication that men take for um, erections. I make people better because I'm truly allergic to band-aids. I just don't like giving somebody a prescription which fools them into thinking that they're getting better or that the problem doesn't exist while the problem actually keeps getting worse. In fact, if I could only have a dollar for every time somebody says to me, you know, Viagra used to kind of sort of work, but as I've gotten older, it just doesn't do anything for me anymore. And that makes complete sense because what happens is that erections are really a matter of flow. Vascular erectile dysfunction is your number one problem. So your blood flow is limited because plaques build up. Now think about your teeth. Everybody goes to the dentist, or at least we're supposed to, right? Mm -hmm. And they tell you to come every six months for a cleaning. Why? Because crap builds up. So your blood vessels are no different than your teeth. Things build up over time. Now, at least you're occasionally going to the dentist, but nobody's cleaning the insides of your blood vessels. When this happens to people, I often tell them, you also need to see a cardiologist because very often, in my opinion, erectile dysfunction is the first sign of heart disease. You may not know that your heart's not working well, but you'll notice if your penis isn't. So I tell them that they absolutely have to go see a cardiologist. So I help with sound wave therapy. I use acoustic shockwave devices and I use those to painlessly break up blockages within those blood vessels to improve blood flow. And it is completely painless. There's no downtime. If anything, they have better sex that day after treatment than they would have before. So it's a great treatment. And then I also do pee shots, uh, which are priapus shots, where we take blood from the arm and spin it down into platelet-rich plasma. I actually do a stronger, you know, more turbocharged version of it because I have a go big or go home mentality. <laughs> and uh, so I make them a lot stronger. I also use exosomes. So these are using basically your growth factor to stimulate your stem cells. What's the injection site for that P shot? In the penis. Oh, wow. But believe it or not, if you read my reviews, you'll see a consistent theme is not only are they grateful for the treatment, they all say it didn't hurt because they're shocked. They all think I'm lying initially, or they think I'm, if not lying, certainly maybe painting it with, you know, a different brush saying, oh, maybe, you know, like doctors sometimes lie to the patients. So it's just a quick pinch and then it hurts like hell. So they're <laughs> right. trying to be, you know, like kind to them and placate them. But no, then they're like, it really didn't hurt. I said, I told you. Yeah, but I didn't believe you. And so that's an overwhelming thing. What 
part of the penis do you inject? Like the shaft. Just on the right. wow, wow. Is it a really fine needle? Yes, but the truth of the matter is that my numbing technique is what makes me famous more than anything else. Okay. <laughs> I truly have a painless pee shot. Nice. For those men that were born without girth, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Because you're saying that the women enjoy the, the thickness. How do you help those men? What I do is I do a combination therapy. As far as I know, I'm the only person doing it, at least in my part of the world. I am combining both PRP and hyaluronic acid fillers. So I'm not doing implants of any kind. I don't like the thought of implants because there's too much that can go wrong. Kind of like labiaplasties. A lot of women nowadays, it's a very fashionable surgery. It's, it's very, very incredibly popular right now. Where women are tri trimming their labia, they don't like the look. They want them absolutely symmetric. They want them to be twins, not, not sisters, which I don't understand that concept. I think truly, I'm not an anti-porn person. I have a, you know, do what you want kind of mentality personally. Like, like well, how does it affect me if you like porn? As long as it's not interfering with your life, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But I think porn movies, the one thing they do mess up for the average person is they give you an unrealistic expectation of what your body should look like. And I think that that's certainly the case with labiaplasties. Now, as far as the penis is concerned, you might say, well, that's the same thing with a penis. And I did have a tongue in cheek episode once towards the beginning of my podcast last year. I called it how to get a porn star penis, because isn't that what every man secretly wants? <laughs> do tell. Admit. So trust me, they're coming to me. I know they're what they want. So, so the thing is that I am helping these men get better girth. And also not only is it instantaneous with the hyaluronic acid filler with the PRP or the PRF that I use, it's stronger than PRP. Um, it's giving them some collagen production over time. So not only do you get the instant gratification with the filler, you are actually getting better. Now I'm not saying that you will have a porn star penis from the PRP alone, but it does make you better. There's no question about that. And so there's numbing involved with this as well before the filler yes. and yeah. yes, okay. most people who are getting penis enlargement are getting a pee shot and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of them remember flying to me from other places, so they want to get the most done that they possibly can at a time. Yeah. So they pay for you know depending on what they have time for. Some will fly and fly out same day. Some will come get a few days worth of treatment. So it depends. But we're very used to combining those treatments. So you numb for one, you might as well do both. Now, what's your percentage of men to women patients? I see a lot of women, definitely. But I think the people flying to me are mostly male. Okay. So I would say maybe 75% are male. And what's the most requested procedure for women? Vaginal rejuvenation and the O-shot. I mean, it's really, I combine them as well. Like for the men... I do the erectile dysfunction treatment where I do the P-shot and I do the acoustic wave therapy. I do those because they're synergistic. I don't think that either one is, what, what should I say? They're both great in and of themselves, but together they do a whole lot more as a combination than they would apart. So in this case, one plus one doesn't equal two. It's more like four or five in my opinion, because they help each other do what the other one's supposed to do. Like when you have good blood flow, you're fertilizing the soil of the pea shot, right? Because now you have good, healthy, oxygenated blood pumping through and a lot more of it. So the pea shot works better. Now the pea shot also improves your, your quality of the penis from the inside out. So it helps the blood, for, blood flow do more, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. They go very well together. Now for vaginal rejuvenation, I do acoustic wave therapy for women as well. And because, you know, flow is flow, just because you're not looking for an erection per se, doesn't mean that you don't need the same blood flow because, you know, penises shrink over time. Why? Because there's not enough blood flow. So even the clitoris shrinks over time. So a woman needs blood flow just as much as a man does, because remember, more women are going to orgasm from the clitoris itself than they ever will from vaginal penetration, no matter what the porn movies tell you. Because if you look at a porn movie, it's, it's hilarious to me because, you know, the man's thrusting and she's making all those faces and she's having this crazy orgasm, but it's not coming from vaginal penetration. Most of the time, only 18% of women can 
orgasm vaginally. Now I can help increase their chances with my treatments, but it's still not even a 50-50. So the clitoris is very important. So the O shot for women, which is the same idea as the P shot for men, helps increase the size of the clitoris a little bit. It's not going to make it a golf ball, but it does make it a little bit meatier, if I may call it that. And it does make it more sensitive. And for both men and women, it's improving your vascularity. So it helps you have even more blood vessels in the area. So it brings blood in that way as well. So that's why I was saying that this is promoting new blood vessels and the acoustic wave therapy is helping you have better blood flow. So they really work so well together. And for women, I also do vaginal tightening with a CO2 laser. Oh, wow. Now, not all CO2 lasers are created alike. You know, there's different technology within CO2s. The technology has been around forever, but not every device company has improved it as much as it can. So I use a device that's fractionated CO2, and it's beautiful, beautiful treatment, great results. Tightening vaginas to a pre-childbirth state also helps them be more lubricated and uh, thicker skin, thicker mucous membranes, because a lot of women tear as they become menopausal because of estrogen, this, that, the other, wear and tear. So it helps them on many levels. So how often would one need to typically get a P-shot or an O-shot? You know, you can't overdo rejuvenation. So it's one of those things where I have some people who are so committed, they have a standing appointment every three months and they come for them. There are others who may come once in six months. There are people who may do it once a year. The more you do, the better it gets. This is not a treatment where you can overdo it. I mean, I guess you could overdo anything, come to think of it, but within limits, what are you going to overdo? You're not using chemicals. You are injecting something that came from your body, processing it a little differently to maximize the benefit from it, and you're injecting it back. So really, you're not going to be allergic to it. It's your own tissue. And we have a zero infection rate at our office, so infection's not a concern I have. So it's just... You know, more is better in this case. The more, the merrier. And how expensive can this get? It depends, really. The more you package, the cheaper it gets. Like if you do a combination with the acoustic wave therapy and the P-shot, it gets cheaper. So, And also the more you get, the cheaper it gets. So I guess it just depends. Okay. All right. So my question is back to the men. How mm-hmm. do you do penis enlargements? How's that process go? Well, we're not injecting into the inner workings of the penis with that. We are with the P-shot because with the P-shot, we are trying to change how the penis works. So with that, we're injecting into the penis. The penis enlargement that we do is beneath is between the outer layers of the penis. So you're going between the skin layers. Can you actually lengthen the penis? What happens is, I don't know that we're ever really lengthening the penis, but if you think of a penis... Most penises have at least some level of wrinkling Mm -hmm. on them, right? So when you fill them out, they extend out. So it's really still the same amount of skin. It's really the same penis, but you stretch it out a little or a lot, depending on how many enlargements you have. Mm -hmm. But that's what happens. So I never, never, ever promise my patients length. But if you look at my website, drsexfairy.com, you'll see in the pictures in the gallery that just about everybody's at least a little bit longer. But that's what happens. You're not truly lengthening the penis. I think you're taking what you've already got and filling it so that you fill that space where it's crumpled up and it's not crumpled anymore, so it naturally elongates it. Okay, so how do you help people that are just finding a a reduced libido? How how do you increase this? Because we we do talk about this on the show quite a bit. Well, you know, so much of libido is mental. So I always want to know from my patients if their relationship's in a good place. That's a big deal. Are they depressed? Are they stressed? Those are big issues that not everybody thinks about. Because if you're depressed or you're not getting along with your partner, you're not going to want to get it on with them. So one of my initial questions is often, are you able to masturbate? Do you want to masturbate? So if they're masturbating, well, clearly they have at least some libido. And I ask them, how long are you lasting when you masturbate? It's a valid question. I ask them, how long do you last from the time you enter a vagina to the time you ejaculate? So I ask those questions. So actually, crazy as it sounds, those help me figure out how to help them as well with libido. Then I like to use acoustic wave therapy because what it does is, once that blood is pulsating through your groin, you are going to feel different tissue. Your penis is now 
active. Things are buzzing down there, if that makes sense. I'm not saying you feel a gush of fluid going through your penis, but you're going to start getting spontaneous erections again. You're going to start having that morning wood that men talk about. <laughs> that will come back. And then, you know, you're like, well, hell, I'm hard. Let's do something with this. And not to mention that, you know, not enough people are thinking about the importance of testosterone levels. So a lot of people, I always talk about this on my podcast, go to these puppy mill hormone places where you're just a number and you really should try to find a good endocrinologist, a good internist who will help you balance out your hormones. That's important. Thyroid, not enough people think about thyroid when it comes to sexual function, but it is mm -hmm. important. Oh, it is. So once you can balance your hormones out and for women, you know, um, I know that we're talking more about sugar daddies, but women lose libido too, right? I want to talk so, about women for sure. Yeah. See, women need testosterone, not just estrogen. You know, your gynecologist is more likely to give you some estrogen cream if she even asks about it. Most gynecologists are doing a pap smear and that's about it. You're lucky if you get some blood work done and that's it. Nobody cares to ask you, or at least not many people care to ask you. How sex is going? Is it hurting? Is it pleasurable? Do you have any desire? So hormones are very important. Finding the right practitioner is important. And I think that's why I have made such a mark on the world in the short time that I have been doing my TikTok, Dr. Sex Fairy, doing my podcast, Dr. Sex Fairy. And the, the transition I made into sexual medicine has been so successful. Not enough people are asking those questions. And then nutritionally, what is your diet? We are what we eat. We are what we do in our lifestyle. How much alcohol are you drinking? Alcohol will kill your libido and kill your ability to have an erection and to perform and to last. Premature ejaculation becomes a real issue when you drink too much. So supplements, in fact, you know, as we were discussing earlier, I'm coming out with my own supplement line because too many of my patients were getting these gas station supplements where, you know, they have, make those crazy claims. <laughs> and you don't know where the stuff was made and you don't know what the hell's in it. And sometimes I say, you know, bring, bring me that next time you come. Show me what the hell you're talking about because I sure as hell I'm not going to a gas station looking for these smutty things. So I say, bring me that damn thing. So they'll bring it and I'll try to call these people except when you go to some of these websites, if you can even find a website, there's no phone number. You don't know who you're getting this stuff from. So that's why I felt that supplemental medication like that, it's, it may be natural, but it can, it can create quite a, you know, pow, pow effect, like boosting nitric oxide. What is an erection, but increased levels of nitric oxide and increased blood flow. That's what it's going to do. And nitric oxide is just as important for women. If you want your sugar baby to want to have sex, give her some nit nitric oxide to her. She'll function better. She'll enjoy it more. Okay. So, write that down. <laughs> so we, we actually have been experimenting lately and we found some of these in the sex stores with sex drinks mm -hmm. and sex drink formulas. I think Lily bought a couple of different yeah, kinds. Yeah, a couple of different kinds. Tried them out. And I don't know if it's a placebo effect. One, I felt like it did work and I had increased libido. The other one I felt like really didn't work. Well, you know, you don't know what they're putting in them and how much of that stuff is being put in it. I mean, you could have a supplement with horny goat weed that doesn't have much horny goat weed. You could have some maca in there, but not enough maca in there. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have three supplements, basically. One is a nitric oxide booster. One is for libido. And then one is for uh, testosterone, to boost testosterone naturally. And are these for so men and women? Um, nitric oxide definitely is for men and women. The libido one is definitely for men and women. The one with testosterone, I would just like most people to know the baseline levels before they take it because you don't want to overdo it. But absolutely, I mean, it helps both people. And where can we find these? These haven't yet come to market. So if anybody wants to get on my list, they can email me at askme at drsexfairy.com and I'll put them on my list. They come out in November. We're having a big launch. Awesome. That's exciting. That, that is really cool. And you, you also mentioned before the show that you're coming out with your own penis pump. I am because that matters. I think flow is, you know, if, I always joke. I say, if you don't have flow, you don't grow. It's true because you need to increase blood flow into the penis. And, you know, yes, masturbation helps, but... You've got to keep that blood flow there for a while. So I use, uh, you know, my patients again, using these random penis pumps and 
then they don't always have good results. They get irritated or it's not comfortable to use. And it doesn't have very many settings. You, It's one or one setting or nothing. Or they have to pump it manually and then, you know, to keep pumping it like a blood pressure cuff, you know, in the hospital when you see one of those. This not, doesn't seem very comfortable to me. So have done that and come up with one that's, you know, really well designed and has different pressure settings for different people's, you know, comfort. You can slowly build up to where you need to be, where you can extend out more. And then you stay that way for a few minutes and you maintain that blood flow. So do you have a yeah. research and development department of man just I standing the back there? I research and development waiting. department, <laughs> even though I don't have a penis. <laughs> no. A happy friend, let's just say. <laughs> You're listening to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Hey, all you sugar daddies, I want you to talk with my new friend, Maria Scaptura. Now, she is a PhD student at Virginia Tech, and she's doing some research on the sugar dating experience, and she needs to interview some sugar daddies, so help us out. We want to hear about your experiences in the bowl and your pathways into it. Now, these interviews are completely anonymous, unrecorded, and any information divulged is fully confidential. So go to our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com, and press on the ad. Or you can email her at scaptura at vt.edu. And that's spelled S-C-A-P-T-U-R-A at V-T. Stands for Virginia Tech dot edu. So help us out. Look forward to talking to you. You're listening to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Have a comment or want to be on the show? Okay. Find us at secretsofasugardaddy.com. Now back to the show with your host, Marcus. You know, as I was browsing through some of your podcast titles, I'm absolutely fascinated. I've listened to many of them. I haven't got every episode, but I plan to. I want to touch on one that you got into, I think it was episode 29, porn addiction, fact or fiction. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I think we're just too uptight as a community. I think everybody's always trying to judge everybody else. You know, people who watch porn are bad. They're dirty. They're smutty. Why? Is entertainment like anything else? Now, I have no stock in any porn company. I don't know any porn stars personally. I mean, I have nothing to gain or lose from the situation. I am just saying that if it, if you see it as entertainment, then why is it necessarily a bad thing? Anything in excess is a bad thing, right? I mean, if you do too much exercise, that can hurt you. If you eat too much, that can hurt you. Too much wine can hurt you. But how is a little bit of wine going to hurt you? So I think it's, I, I look at it the same way. Like, like any, like people who, you know, it's, I just think that people are judged by it. And most people are using porn just to masturbate for the most part. And I guess it is what it is. Unless it's interfering with your life in some way, I don't think porn is necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, piggybacking. I'm my patients to do it. But. Piggybacking on the topic of, of masturbation. And this is from the female perspective, and I'm asking for a friend. Mm -hmm. So of course you are. If, <laughs> I like that. If you haven't had a partner for a significantly long time and you've been taking care of your own needs with toys and supposedly that can be very desensitizing, what are your thoughts on that? Like and and can that ever be resensitized? I guess is what I need to yeah, do. Yeah, that's well, a great here's question. The thing. People say it's a great question and people say the same thing about masturbation. Um, I get this all the time that, you know, because I masturbate a lot, I now cannot get erect with a woman or I don't last as long or I don't feel as much. I don't think masturbation is the problem. I think it's a death grip when you're masturbating. That's the problem. And it's interesting you brought that up because after I bring out the penis bump, a few months later, we're bringing out a masturbating device so that men can literally put their penis in it and just sit back, relax, watch TV, do whatever, drink a beer. They have both their hands. They are can you, eat and drink a beer. Are you still get, doing research and development on that? I can send you one, my friend. Don't worry. <laughs> asking, for a, for, asking for a friend. We have a lot yeah, of friends. You can they give yeah, us you questions for you. <laughs> no, but, but really, I think even for women, it's very important actually to use a vibrator if you're not having sex. 
because it's use it or lose it. That's one of my podcast titles as well, because when people are not having sex, their tissue will atrophy over time, which means slowly it will die. So it's not just your libido that's dying. It's not just your, your joy for life that's dying. Your tissue is literally dying. Your body was meant for sex. So the so, vibration is not damaging. It doesn't cause permanent no, damage. No, if anything, I mean, again, anything done wrong will damage you, but most vibrators are not necessarily bad for you. But the right vibrator will actually be good for you because the right vibrator will actually increase blood flow into the vaginal canal. That's a good thing. Are you that developing one of those? I am, but not. that's going to be number three or four on the list. <laughs> it's not for the men first. Perfect. I am actually developing it. I want the right vibrator. Okay. Another one of your episodes is surprising facts about orgasm. Mm-hmm. What are some surprising facts about orgasm? There are so many, my friend. For instance, women can have an orgasm during childbirth. Really? What? Yes. I can't imagine. <laughs> childbirth is the worst thing that ever happened to me. That's the most pain yeah. I've ever had in my life. Was it? That's right? what I thought as well. But, you know, there are women who can orgasm during childbirth. Wow. So that's, mm-hmm. Okay. And next, <laughs> what are some other there things? There are so many. <laughs> you said there's so many. That's there a very so specific many. one. I'm yeah. still recovering and taking that one in. Yeah, I'm still, yeah, I don't know how to process <laughs> yeah, that I one. That, I thought that would be an interesting one for you. Yeah. So I've had many experiences in the last six years of being single, and I've seen so many strange things. I was once with a girl. I only explain it that she's built different because literally she had, and I counted them, 32 orgasms in an hour. And then I'll be with somebody that is one and done. And then everywhere in between. So why is there such a vast difference? And can their girls that are one and done, can they get to a multiple stage where they actually enjoy it multiple times? And that's an interesting question. I think it's no different than a man who can last forever, even at an older age versus a man who cannot. I think we're some, some of us are just built a little differently, but I think you can also train your body to have more orgasms. I think the more you masturbate, actually, the more you'll be able to know what works for you. And I think that is a great way for the average woman to figure out what she does and doesn't like. I think if a woman actually looks at her parts and knows what her parts do, I think that's a great start. Do you know there have been studies on this? They have shown the outside of a woman's genitalia to a number of women and said, where's the clitoris? Where's the vaginal opening? Where do you pee out of? They don't know. That to me is scary. Now, I don't expect the average woman to have my level of knowledge of female anatomy, but I do find it heartbreaking that a woman can sometimes not even know where a clitoris is. Mm -hmm. A woman thinks she's having sex and peeing from the same hole. That blows my mind. Yeah, that's... So a woman literally takes a mirror and looks at herself and figures out, okay, this is a clitoris. This might feel good to me and try to see what she likes and doesn't like. A clitoris even is not necessarily as sensitive on both sides or all around as it is one area. So I always recommend to women, touch yourself and see where you feel the best. Figure out different positions. I mean, a lot of women, because of poor body image and other things, don't necessarily want to be on top because that exposes the rolls and the jiggles, which are a little hidden when you're in the missionary position. So women don't like to jiggle. So I say, well, you can either jiggle and have a great old time with sex, or you can stay missionary and not do a whole lot. It's your call. So a woman's more likely in that position to orgasm because she's getting clitoral stimulation. That's why woman on top is such a great position for women. Mm -hmm. I found that to be true. All right. Another question that most of my listeners I know will have, even though they didn't tell me this. Men are fascinated by how a woman, some women can squirt. What, what is that all about? You know, some women can and some women can't. And it does not affect the quality of the orgasm one bit. And I have a lot of women who come to me and say, I want you to help me so that I can start squirting. I said, but you don't need to. It does not affect the quality of your orgasm. It's just some women squirt, some women don't. Some women squirt without even having an orgasm. So it's not that you have to have an orgasm to squirt or that you have to squirt to have a good orgasm. They are mutually exclusive. 
because in porn, some of the most popular videos are women that seem to come to this unbelievable orgasm and just spraying everywhere. And then the men, I guess, expect their partners to try to duplicate that. And it's very frustrating because most women. Well, that's the problem with how. porn. I have nothing against porn. I just say go to porn for entertainment, yep. not sex ed. Unrealistic, oftentimes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you and have to remember it's women. acting. Yeah, and also those women are not necessarily squirting. There are times where they actually put some stuff in them right before they shoot that scene. So they're not necessarily naturally squirting. I'm not sure what the hell they're putting in there, but I've absolutely, um, I have reliable sources that have told me that. Yeah, there's, there's, I'm sure there's all kinds of ways to make something on camera seem a little bigger, a little more fantastic than, you know, than in real life. So another thing is, as you talk about women's, vaginas are they all look different just like men's penises are all a little different women's breasts are all a little different i had an instance where i was with somebody and she had very large lips or what what, i don't know what you would call those flaps of skin Mm -hmm. some are self-conscious about it some are not um it seemed like she was a little bit out of the norm what what can you do for somebody that's a little self-conscious about that Well, that's what we were discussing earlier with labiaplasties. Mm. There are doctors who cut the labia to make it shorter, tighter, smaller, more visually appealing per porn star standards, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I don't do that. I disagree with that on many levels. A, I think that we are adhering to a standard that is unrealistic and that's wrong on many levels. I don't think a woman should feel judged for how her labia looks because I just think that's ridiculous. Call me crazy, but that's how I look at it. And I don't want to encourage dysfunction of that sort. So I refuse to do labiaplasties. I can absolutely do them. My office is set up for them. I choose not to do them. I have never done a labiaplasty and I refuse to do a labiaplasty. Now we can actually make labia look better without surgery. So if you go on my website, if you go to drsexfairy.com just now on your end and you look, you'll see on the gallery labial rejuvenation or the wing lift. So what I do with that is the same thing I do for penis enlargement. I put PRF in there. So I help a woman develop her own collagen. So she's not loose and floppy. It gives her a little more substance. It fills it out. It makes it not be quite so shriveled up. As we get older, it's not just our faces that shrivel up, so it is a labia. And when a woman, especially in middle age, is now going to have a new man go down on her, it's very disconcerting. So I combine both PRP, PRF treatments and fillers. Now I have done treatments where I've just done the PRF without filler and I've done many where I have combined the two and I have exceptional results. So when you can get that result non-surgically without the risk of labiaplasty, because see, it's not just that you're gonna spend money and go under the knife, What people need to realize is that with labiaplasty, you can lose sexual function because that area of a woman's genitalia is full of nerve endings. Now, if you cut that, you could cut the wrong area and cut nerves. Now you've got a problem where before you just didn't like how the sisters looked. Now you're not feeling anything. I don't think it's worth the risk. I don't think so either. That seems like it would be an extremely painful procedure. Well, you know, if you think about it, I am injecting men's penises, but not causing pain. I'm enlarging men's penises, but not causing pain. So, you you know, done right, it shouldn't necessarily be a painful procedure to go through. I disagree with it as a matter of principle, because I think it's unnecessary. Because with a man's bigger penis, there's at least a function to it. You know, when he's having either heterosexual or homosexual sex, there's some pleasure aspect to it. Why are we cutting labia? Who's benefiting from that? It's not changing the sexual experience for you or him. You see? So what's, what's the benefit? I always think of you know, risk-benefit ratios. What's the benefit? I don't see much of a benefit. Because as much as I am a cosmetic surgeon, I'm also about empowering people to feel comfortable in their own skin. And I think women have to deal with enough nonsense as it is in society and being judged about what size they are and this and that. But for the love of God, love your lips. <laughs> <All> <laughs> your lips. 
<laughs> I'm going to make your, a bumper sticker. Yeah, love your lips. <laughs> All right. I have kind of a difficult one for you. And it's a, somebody that I had dated for over a year. And he was from uh, Egypt. And her parents were Muslim. And they clitoral cutting as a, as a teenager. Is there anything you can do to help restore some of this? Uh, she had gone to a lot of therapy. And it's just a tough situation. That is a very tough situation, and it's a horrible, horrible thing that's done in many parts of the world today. It, believe it or not, there are parts of the U.S., some cultures, even in modern-day America, that are doing it. So it happens more than we'd like to think it does. Now, when they're doing that, they're mostly cutting the external part of the clitoris. But the clitoris, most people don't realize, is actually a longer, deeper, bigger structure. So it's kind of horseshoe-shaped. So it goes deeper into the v- vaginal area. Now, you know how people talk about a G-spot inside the vagina? There's no such thing as a G-spot. There was this German doctor, Dr. Grafenberg, who described this area, this spot, where people were more orgasmic if that area was stimulated. Well, they've done cadaver studies, and they found that there is no such area. What they're probably feeling is actually still a clitoral orgasm, because the clitoris, like I said, is horseshoe shaped, so it goes deep down in, inside the vaginal area. So the area that people think is a G-spot is still a clitoral orgasm. So you can be stimulated internally. So I think that those women still have some hope of an orgasm. And I think that I haven't actually treated somebody like that, to tell you the truth. But I feel that if I injected deeper into the vaginal area, into more of the clitoral structures deeper inside, I think you could stimulate those areas. You're not going to form a new head on it. You can't make structures grow back again that don't exist anymore. But I think you can make what does exist more sensitive. Mm-hmm. And also acoustic wave therapy, I think, would work very well for somebody like that. Now, remember, even with the best of effort, even with the best of technology and the most skill, even if I went all in, I could not make a woman who has no clitoris or, I guess, has gone through the procedure basically and doesn't have a normal clitoral structure, have a normal orgasm. But maybe we can make her more orgasmic in other ways and help her have a different kind of orgasm. So at least she has some hope of pleasure in this lifetime. Well, so the sex was very strange in the beginning and it was pretty disappointing. And then she revealed this to me after many dates and I kind of confronted her. I'm like, hey, I I don't know what's going on. And then she finally admitted it's, it's not you it's me and the next time she did bring a vibrator which that helped get the deeper sensations and she said basically that's the only way and that's what i'm saying point, yeah. that you know the inside is still intact mm-hmm. because they killed the head and that whole area so the most sensitive part is gone but thankfully they don't take it all yeah because it's deep down inside and that's what i'm saying what people think is the g spot is really an extension of the clitoris So there is hope for that. Like I said, I haven't treated somebody like that, but I have a very clear idea of how I would treat her. I would do acoustic wave therapy to increase the blood flow into the area. I would also remember acoustic wave therapy is sound waves. So you're vibrating on a very high intensity. A vibrator is not going to do what acoustic wave or shock wave therapy is going to do. So it's a vibrator on steroids. Yeah. So I would definitely do that. And I would do the injections with the PRF and I would even add exosomes really, really concentrate that good stuff and then inject it in. Can you give us an idea what the acoustic wave procedure is like and what it feels like and what sure, happens? Sure, it's like a wand. It's a wand. And for men, we put it all over the penile area, the scrotum. We put it on the uh, insides of the legs, you know, what's called the inguinal area, the folds, the crease of the leg into the pubic area, on the pubic area. I do more regions than most doctors. Most doctors don't do the pubic area because they say there's not enough blood flow there to matter. I think that's silly because any blood flow is good blood flow. In my opinion, it's still feeding the area. So I do more areas in my practice and at a, at a decent intensity, because if you do mamby pamby stuff, why bother? Is there any so, sensation? Do they feel anything happening? Yeah, they feel it. They feel it happening. They feel the vibrations. It's a vibration. Okay. Yeah. And, and most men will actually get an erection right there and then on the table. Oh, because What's an erection? It's increased inflow of blood, right? There you so, go. And they're very embarrassed because they, you know, our patients are so appropriate. 
they, they never come on to us. Some people will ask me, do your patients ever proposition you? Do they ever say anything, you know, stupid? And I say, no, they're completely appropriate. And if anything, they're horrified to even be in a position like that. So, you know, when they get an erection, they're so embarrassed. And we have to tell them, remember, we had this discussion. They forget in that moment. They're so mm. embarrassed. They forget it all. Like, yeah, 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 you said, but I didn't think. I said, well, it's not your fault. It's involuntary. They're bringing blood in. And so you have an erection. That's why I so said earlier that when, they can go and have a better erection later. When you do the acoustic wave therapy for the women, same thing. Do they sometimes mm-hmm. have same an idea. orgasm? We, we do the same. Uh, well, no, they don't have orgasms. Well, I'm just checking. <laughs> for a woman to orgasm. I was going to sign up, but okay. <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, they don't tell us they are anyway. But a man is hard to deny that he has a big heart penis. <laughs> so uh, uh, women probably just like enjoy it and don't give us credit for it. So um, with the woman is the same idea. And for the vaginal part of it, the internal part of it, we insert the probe a little bit, but not all the way in. It doesn't go in all the way like a vibrator. Towards the outside portions of the vagina, yes. But same idea. It works very, very well. It's fascinating. And it's great for cancer patients, you know. Cancer patients sometimes cannot get some of the stronger laser treatments initially. Eventually, I think a lot of them can. But initially, they can't necessarily get the laser because their skin is still sensitive. The mucous membranes are a little, you know, more delicate compared to somebody who hasn't gone through chemotherapy. I mean, I know I'm somebody who's gone through cancer and very, very aggressive cancer treatment. It damages your body and your genitalia is no different. Mm-hmm. So it's a very, very safe treatment for them all. Okay, thank you. We do encounter this, or the girls encounter this quite a bit, where somebody will have like a a shot or something they have to give themselves because they've had cancer. I know you had an episode on something about, oh, every man wants an erection that lasts forever until it really does. And I know Amy has a a situation where she's like, I can't, I can't take it that long. I just, it won't go down. (laughs) Right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Once you inject, you're kind of forced into that erection. So it's not a normal physiologic response to that erection. That's why I don't prescribe Trimix, which is a shot you're talking about. I have seen the worst of this as an ER doctor, because I have seen men lose complete sexual function where they may have been injecting Trimix or doing Viagra and Cialis recreationally where they didn't really need it, but they decided to pump it up anyway for an anniversary or a vacation. Trust me, that happens a lot. And now, you know, they have that erection that's not going away, so they're very proud of it. And so <laughs> they don't think it's a problem. Look you know, at me. She may think it's a problem. They're like, damn, isn't this the whole point of this? Like, let's go. And then four hours pass. And they think it's just something they say in the ads just for shits and giggles, that it really doesn't matter, that they're somehow the exception. And then it starts to get uncomfortable. Then it gets painful. And they're like, there's something very wrong here. Then they're embarrassed because, you know, an erection that won't go away is embarrassing. And they won't call their doctor. When they call their doctor, they don't always get their doctor. By the time they come to an ER, a lot of time has passed. At 24 hours, they're going to have impotence for life. That's why men who've had an erection that won't go away, once I've had to cut a penis to drain it, I have had to use medications to help reduce the erection. I mean, it's a shit show. So I come from it from a point of view of somebody who's seen how bad it can get. That's why I don't do it. I could make a lot of money by prescribing Trimix. There's good money in this kind of stuff, but I have integrity, you know, that pesky little thing called integrity. So I don't do something that could hurt my patients. So instead I make them better. Well, very good. This has been fascinating, Dr. Baba, otherwise known as Dr. Sex Fairy. How'd you come up with that name? Well, you know, I do sprinkle my magic fairy dust and help men and women have the best sex ever and the best intimate wellness ever. So why not own it? I am the fairy. I am a doctor. I'm Dr. Sex Fairy. (laughs) That's fantastic. And uh, tell us where they can find you. They can find me on my hit TikTok account, Dr. Sex Fairy, my very, very wildly popular podcast, Dr. Sex Fairy. And I'm on Instagram as the real Dr. Sex Fairy and on Facebook as Dr. Sex Fairy. And of course, there's DrSexFairy.com. So there's fairy dust all over the world. Well, if they can't find you, they're not trying very hard because it sounds like know, you right? are everywhere. And you have your hands in a lot of things. We're excited to see what comes in the future. And I'm definitely going to have you back on the show. I'd like to make you a regular guest because 
you know, our audience, they deal with these things on a regular basis. We talk about these things on a regular basis, but we're not doctors. And so we're guessing and trying to come up with solutions, but you have some really interesting things to say about it. And you, of course you've done the research and you do it. You know, and this is what you do every day. Well, and I'm really excited to try your supplements and talk about them on the show. I will definitely send you the supplements and my testers. How about that? My, <laughs> my vibrator testers. <laughs> there we go. We'll be happy Something to, to try those. Something to look forward to. Woo! All right. <laughs> well, we thank everybody for tuning in today. And uh, if you'd like to share your sugar dating stories or questions, go to our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com, and follow us on Instagram. We'd really appreciate it. And go to Apple Podcast, give us a five-star rating, and let us know what you think of the show. All right. Thank you, Lily. And until next episode, bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com.